I'd like to welcome everybody here, ex-Chief Minister, university professors, Congress party leaders, and students. Uh, thank you for coming here and listening to me. It's an honor for me to come here. Honor and a pleasure. I must say I really enjoyed uh, the performances there. I missed one, but I would have liked to see that one. But I did enjoy those two, and they were quite relevant. Uh, the names were quite relevant. So forever young, much like Manipur, um, spirit that never dies, and then highway to hell. You know what's going on in the country. Uh, we have a prime minister who refuses to listen to the country, prime minister who doesn't respect different cultures, different histories, different viewpoints. Uh, so very, very well thought out cultural performance there. That was very nice. Now I'm here to speak to you. I'm here to listen to you. Whatever questions you have, make them as hard as you want, as difficult as you want. I have no problem. Uh, I'm here to learn from, from you. So please go ahead. The first question. And that is from Jen Collar Thodam, MSc, first semester, Manipur University. Please stand up and ask your question. Are you normally this quiet? <laughs> uh, sir, my question is. A very simple one. I would like that. Uh, have you ever considered uh, the rising uh, fees of the students uh, that uh, in institution that a students uh, usually drops out and then affects the uh, country's economic growth? So uh, let's talk. Like, have you ever considered about the rising fees of the student that? usually leads a student to like economy uh, to drop out of the college and the next question is like uh, the country the government uh, nowadays the now the government um, may uh, like make a rule that the army can uh, exercise their power exercise, exercise their power more in the notice India like they can capture anyone they want so do you support uh, that the military force can um, capture anyone in Northeast India, and why only Northeast India? Like, do you uh, agree with this uh, uh, exercise, uh, military, uh, the power that has been given to the military? That's my question. So, on the on the education system, and the fact that the Indian education system uh, is becoming more expensive, that's hugely to do with the fact that we're not spending enough money on education as a central government. Uh, we've committed to increasing the expenditure on education to about 6% of GDP. And we believe that the government is responsible for opening high quality universities and colleges. Private people have their own role, but the government should ensure low cost, high quality education to all its youngsters. So there I'm I'm pretty clear on that. It's a question of how much money you spend. The current government has drastically reduced the amount of money they're spending on university and college education. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, over the last five years, they've only opened one central university in the whole country. In a similar time, we had opened multiple. On the issue of should the military just be allowed to arrest anybody? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think the military should be allowed to arrest anybody, but there are law and order concerns. Uh, there are law and order concerns all across the country, and so we have to be sensitive to them. But I veer towards allowing expression of people. I veer towards listening to people, and I veer, veer towards reducing uh, these type of uh, laws and minimizing them. That's my personal view. The next question is from Jinsuba Marina Devi, Masters in Political Science from Manipur University. Jinsuba Marina Devi. 
She's here, she's at the back. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It is indeed a great privilege for me to get this opportunity to introduce myself to you, sir. Uh, sir, may I know in what manner the basic principles of Congress are different from that of the BJP? Thank you, sir. <laughs> That's a very nice question. Congress does not believe in cultural imperialism. So Congress does not believe in the idea. Congress does not believe in the idea that one part of this country should rule other parts of this country. We, are, we believe that every part of this country, every state should be allowed to express itself, should be allowed to say and do what it wants, should be able to defend its culture, its language, its traditions, and should feel proud of their own history. The BJP and the RSS want to impose one idea on India. They want to crush all other ideas. And you've seen this happening over the last five years. You've seen what has happened here in Manipur when people voice their opinion against Prime Minister Modi, when people voice their opinion against the Chief Minister. You can see the heavy hand uh, of the Indian government. Um, it doesn't like the people of Manipur expressing themselves. They want you to celebrate. Uh, they want you to celebrate other ideas, other cultures, which is fine. There's no problem. But you should also be allowed to celebrate your own history, your own culture, your own traditions. We believe, I believe that Manipur adds to India. So whatever your perspective is, whatever your feelings are, whatever you want to say, when you say them, I believe that India becomes stronger. Even if sometimes you might say something in, a, in your university that your professors don't like or your, your vice chancellor doesn't like, I think that you should be allowed to say it. The BJP feels that you should not be allowed to say what is in your heart. You should listen to what they have to say and Manipur should be run from Nagpur not from Imphal. That's broadly the difference. I don't think they, all, they appreciate, you know, the band there. I don't think they appreciate um, the type of music that was played here. They would like you to play, you know, a particular type of music. They don't want you to dance around. They want you to stand like this. They don't want you to do all that. So there's a, there's a, there's an inferiority complex in them. There's a deep inferiority complex in them. And, and they are actually scared of other cultures. They're scared of relating to other people. They're scared of basically human relations. And so they take their frustration out on everybody. We are not scared of human relations. We are not scared of other cultures. We celebrate other cultures. And that, frankly, is a very relevant question because that's a fight going on in India today. And you can see this expressed across the board. You can see it expressed in the hatred that is being spread. You can see it expressed in the university system. You hear brilliant students. You are sent a vice chancellor whose only qualification is that he's a member of the RSS. This is an insult to your intelligence. I mean, the only qualification today a man needs to run a university is he should be able to get up in the morning, wear a pair of shorts, hold a stick, and do, a, and, you know, do exercises in a shatha. It's ridiculous. But that's frankly, that's frankly what this country has come to. Can we take the next question, sir? Yeah. That would be from Chongtham Laisna Devi, Department of Philo Philosophy, Manipur University. Good morning, sir. 
Firstly, more than four months, Manipur University was not functioning and in the state of turmoil, chaotic situation on demanding the removal of Vice Chancellor Epi Pande. During this agitation, thousands of thousands of security forces are deployed and suddenly raided on the midnight of 21st September 2018 throughout of the campus. Students, teachers, staff were tortured, harassed, and even some of them were put to the jail for, for 20 days. And next, moreover, in a democratic state of true constitutions, the citizens across do not enjoy the privileges and basic human rights equally. We all living under the AFSA Armed Force Special Power Act, 1958, extremely vulnerable situation of getting killed is early sorry easily we get charged by draconian act like nsa easily afsa and nsa are not the team with human will live easily which affects our freedom of speech freedom of decision easily we could charge under the protection constitutions how would you address the situation well when we were in power here we were trying to reduce the impact of AFSA, we re removed it from um, seven constituencies. And as far as your, the agitation, and it is, our, it is our intention, it is our intention to reduce the draconian uh, powers uh, of AFSA. And we, we had a record of reducing it. It will take time, it will require the situation to be peaceful, but that is the direction in which we want to go. As far as your university chancellor's concerned, I'm very happy that you did an agitation and you got rid of him. This was the best thing that you could do for yourself. Uh, I do not appreciate, I do not appreciate imposing such people on brilliant students of Manipur University. I do not, uh, I do not think that is the way forward. I think people who understand what students want, people who understand uh, what education is about should be running these institutions. So I'm quite happy that uh, you managed to get rid of the gentleman. The next question is from Professor Amar uh, from Manipur University. She's, he's in the front. Please Hello. give him a mic. Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, the first thing that Modi regime did was evolution of the planning commission. The latest thing is sidelining all the statistical bodies of the country. Now, we would like to have a clear cut stain from you on the statistical system of the country as a foundation for governance. We really need a clear cut stain at this juncture of the country. Uh, the second one, we'd like to hear from you about your vision for the Northeast for the next 20 years. Thank you. It is not only the statistical system that they are attacking. They are attacking every single Indian institution. They are attacking, they've destroyed the planning commission. So the idea of having a strategy moving forward, they have wiped out. And states like the Northeast, which have particular requirements, require a strategic approach. So tremendous damage has been done to the Northeast because they've taken away your special status. They've taken away the special industrial policy that we had put in place. They're also attacking the central foundations of the government. The Reserve Bank of India, you've seen that the head of the Reserve Bank resigned. The Prime Minister bypassed the Reserve Bank and carried out disastrous demonetization, wiped out 2% of our GDP. And these are just ad hoc decisions that the man takes. He just gets up one morning and decides, I'm going to get rid of 500 and 1,000 rupee note. Now, it's, there's no thinking behind it. It's pure mediocrity. He doesn't have much understanding of what economics is. He doesn't go into the details. I think instead of calling it the prime minister's office, it should be called the publicity minister's office. Basically, that's all he's interested in. 
he gets up in the morning and he says okay what what publicity can i do for myself this morning and then he starts and he's causing tremendous damage to the country 4 crore 70 lakh jobs have been lost in the last 5 years the gentleman said that he would give 2 crore jobs per year and he's actually not given anything he's actually lost 4.7 crore jobs so there is a there is an absolute lack of understanding it's the same idea that you take a man who has no idea about how to run a university and place him on top of a university i mean the prime minister makes these fancy speeches and all that but the fact of the matter is and i have nothing against people who don't go to university in fact people who don't go to university are very capable but the prime minister we still don't understand the prime minister seems to believe that he's been to university states that he's been to university but we still have not had access to his university degree nobody actually knows whether the prime minister went to university or not right the the there's an rti in delhi asking for the prime minister's university degree and the rti has not been responded to so basically it is a imposition of mediocrity on a on a country that is extremely sophisticated a country that understands things a country that has huge amount of talent so you just waste all that talent i don't know if you know but when the prime minister carried out demonetization he locked up his entire cabinet he locked with a key he locked his entire cabinet and the cabinet did not even know that the prime minister was going to demonetize india's currency that's the level at which we are operating now coming to how do i think about the northeast number 1 we have to tackle the job crisis in india and the northeast in order to do that do that we have to significantly increase the amount of money we are spending in connecting the northeast to the rest of the country and frankly i like the idea of look east where we connect the northeast to asia from the eastern side so building infrastructure connecting the northeast to other countries in this region and i view northeast frankly as a potential manufacturing hub in the eastern part of india i think i think it is absolutely doable it will take time but it is absolutely doable if we have a strategy for it with regards to agriculture in the northeast we need to make sure that our farmers the the food, fruits and vegetables they are producing are being processed a lot of wastage takes place you are not connected so we would like to set up right near the farms in manipur food processing units for oranges for whatever you grow so that you can the farmers can sell their produce in the factories and get adequate compensation finally if you look at our banking system and you look at the type of people who have access to the money who are given the bank loans you will notice that mr nirav modi got 35000 crore rupees one man got 35000 crore rupees they can't give you special status but they can give one man 35000 crore rupees now the question is how many jobs did this man create for india almost none and there's a list nirav modi mehul choksi lalit modi vijay malia thousands and thousands and thousands of crores of rupees just go straight into their pocket anil ambani go straight in their pocket so what we would like to do is we would take the indian banking system and we would open the doors of the indian banking system to manipuri and northeastern entrepreneurs and youngsters we would allow you we would allow you to access that money get bank loans and build businesses so that you can create jobs for the nation i think that would be broadly how we would think about it but most important and i think this is absolutely non negotiable we will never let anybody compromise on your history on your language on your culture and on your way of life 
you cannot you cannot talk about development of the northeast development of manipur and then not talk about the spirit of the manipuri people not talk about the culture the language which is frankly the most valuable thing that you have it is more valuable than anything else your your way of life so we do not want to allow anybody to impose themselves on your way of life and i think i say that not only for manipur i say that for the entire northeast and all indian states thank you so much the next question is from th rojan singh research scholar manipur university th rojan singh research scholar manipur university so good morning sir i have for one i have only one question call sir, just call me rahul don't call me sir <laughs> simpler sir you have been speaking about uh, rafael uh, speaking and exposing about rafael i can say always sir can you put uh, put light on it or elaborate on it sir rafael is a military aircraft it is a high quality military aircraft when we were in power upa was in power the air force required an aircraft and the air force came to the government of india and said we are looking to buy an aircraft for the indian air force and the prime minister said absolutely go ahead and they after a long negotiation they chose the rafael aircraft which is a french aircraft manmohan singh told the air force that there are a couple of conditions with regards to purchasing the aircraft condition number 1 the aircraft is going to be made in india and it's going to be made by a public sector company called hindustan aeronautical limited which has been making aircraft for many many years the jaguar aircraft the mig aircraft sukhoi aircraft second condition was negotiate the lowest price possible and the air force negotiated 526 crores per aircraft the deal was 95% complete narendra modi became prime minister and the first thing narendra modi did he went to paris france with anil ambani who's a friend of his the same man whose brother has just bailed him out from going to jail because he owed money to erickson the brother bailed him out he took the same man with him to paris france and the contract was changed the contract was taken away at the last minute from the public sector company from hal aircraft is no longer going to be made in india it's going to be made in france the aircraft was not going to be bought for 526 crores the price was raised to 1600 crores per aircraft now the couple questions number 1 anil ambani has never made an aircraft in his life ever in fact he has done no aeronautical work ever he has been handed the biggest defense contract by the prime minister personally the president of france said that the prime minister of india told me in a meeting that the contract must not go to hl the contract must go to anil ambani and the indian government will pay not 526 crores but 1600 crores this is what the french president has said about our chokidar prime minister <laughs> meaning the french president himself is saying chokidar chor hai okay the defense minister mr parikar with all due respect who recently passed away says listen i have no idea about this new contract i don't know what's going on he tells the media please ask the prime minister i have no idea all the defense ministry officials have written in government documents which are now available with the hindu newspaper that the prime minister personally carried out a negotiation a direct negotiation bypassing the entire air force they have said that the prime minister 
negotiation raised the price of the aircraft. They have said that the prime minister damaged the negotiation. And they have said that the aircraft is now going to be coming late. Now the question is, why is the prime minister not saying a word about this? Earlier he said, I don't want to be a prime minister, I You remember that? You remember that, no? Now he's saying, Hum sab chokidar. Everybody's a chokidar. Oh, you weren't saying that earlier. When you became prime minister, you weren't saying everybody's a chokidar. And the question is, whose chokidar are you? You're not the people's chokidar, you're Anil Ambani's chokidar. Right? Uski chokidari kar rahe ho aap. Janta ka paisa chori kar rahe ho. You said, why is there not enough money in education? I'll tell you why there's not enough money in education. Because he gave 30,000 crores to Mr. Anil Ambani. That's why there's not enough money in education. He is taking, he's stealing money from you. He's stealing money from the people of the Northeast. He took away your uh, special status. He's taken that money from you and he's given it to him. Who is that chap? Why is he getting your money? What has he done? Now the CBI director gets up, says, listen, I'm going to investigate this thing. I think that a crime has been committed by the prime minister. 1.30 at night, the CBI director sacked. The Supreme Court then says, bring the man back. Reinstate him as CBI director. He's reinstated as CBI director and Narendra Modi removes him in five hours. Again. So the fact of the matter is that it's black and white. That the Prime Minister has helped Mr. Anil Ambani with corruption and has given him 30,000 crore rupees, the biggest defense contract in the world. That's the answer to Raphael. Thank you. I, I'm sorry I went into a bit of detail because it's important that youngsters understand this. Our Air Force is defending our nation. Huge amount of your money. It's not Mr. Modi's money or Mr. Anil Ambani's money. It's your money. 30,000 crores coming to Manipur for your education would have transformed the entire state of education in Manipur. That's why I went into a little bit of detail. Thank you. Can I take the next question, sir? Yeah. It's from Dusin Ningthaujam. Dusin Ningthaujam. Yes, she's the first row. Please, uh, please give her a mic. Good morning, sir. Morning. Today, I would like to raise the question of one of the most burning issues of our state, that is the Citizenship Amendment Bill. This bill has been a great threat to the indigenous people of Manipur. And because of this, many efforts such as scheduled tribe demand has been undertaken. ILP is also closely linked to it. And the Manipur People Bill uh, that was sent to Honorable President of India that had not been passed, these are all linked together. My question for you is, what are your views for this? How are you going to protect integrity? How are you going to protect the exist uh, existence of the indigenous people? And also another thing that I want to ask you is about corruption. So as we all know that corruption is widespread in our country, it is quite un uncommon for us to not even get a job without paying a bribe or something like that. It is a huge harm for us youth because we are afraid of getting in unemployed in the future, even after we have completed many degrees. So my question is, sir, how are you going to solve this problem? What, are, what steps are you going to take to ensure our safety, uh, our in, uh, insurance and all? Thank you, sir. So on the, on the citizen amendment bill, I'm very clear. It is, again, cultural imperialism. It is an attempt to crush the spirit of the Northeast. And I'm absolutely crystal clear. We fought against the Citizen Amendment Bill in Parliament and we defeated the bill in Parliament. The Congress Party did it. And we are not going to allow this Citizen Amendment Bill to destroy the lives of the Northeast. So we are absolutely crystal clear on that. There is going to be no encroachment in the culture, the language, and the history of the Northeast. We're not going to allow it. And 
we will fight tooth and nail to ensure that citizen amendment bill does not become law on on your corruption question number 1 the the structures that protect us against corruption are the institutions the supreme court the judicial system the free press these institutions so number 1 when we come to power we are going to stop the attack that narendra modi is carrying out on these institutions we are going to allow these institutions their independence we will allow the judiciary to be independent we will allow the election commission to function we will allow courts to opine on things independently second youngsters like you who are honest need to come into the political system you can't complain you can't complain that politics is uh not the way i want it and then keep sitting there and not come into the political system so we would like as many young new people fresh faces to come into the political system to help us clean the system finally there are laws that you can pass the right to information where you allow any citizen to ask any question about his government ask bureaucracy ask the bureaucracy uh any question that they feel they'd like to know so there are laws that you can pass and the rti was a landmark law that we passed now that has also been diluted and sort of distorted so we would like to make those laws more effective as well finally you can't centralize power and expect corruption to reduce today what is happening is power is being centralized in the chief minister's office and the prime minister's office we would like to delegate power down we would like to delegate power to the panchayats to the lower levels of government so that people can access the political system people can participate in the decisions people can ask questions and they can be more transparent so that would be the broad the broad direction but frankly we need your help you know we need youngsters to come into the political system to help us clean the political system it's not going to be possible without you the next question is from shiva ranjani mbbs rims she's in the first row please give her a mic Good morning. Good morning, sir. Sir, you have frequently addressed GST as gobber sink tax, and um, <clears throat> sir, if you come in, sorry, sir, come to power in two thousand nineteen. Crap, this GST. The mic is not working. would we would we scrap gst is that your question do you want gst scrapped do you want gst scrapped i don't want it to be scrapped off but i want it to be modified and uh, sir what would be your tax model if you come to if you come to empower okay yeah, thank you. so the basic idea behind the gst is one tax simple tax minimum tax that is the basic idea and why i call the current gst gabbar singh tax is because it is not actually a gst it's not a gst i mean mr narendra modi has sold the country something which it isn't if you ask any economist in the world is india's gst a gst he will tell you no it's not a gst because the gst cannot have five different taxes a gst has to have one tax so i'm glad you've caught on to this and it is our endeavor when we come to power to give india a simple gst one tax minimum tax simple tax so and we are going to we have we've already we are already working on it and we are pretty confident that we'll be able to significantly simplify it certainly take it down from five different levels to one main level and maybe a secondary level but we are working on that and we're going to deliver that for you Thank you. The next question is from Professor Dorendra Dorendra Singh. 
Good morning. He's in the first row. Please give him a mic. Okay, it will work. Uh, my question is, uh, what will be your party's opinion about the higher education system in India? Because the way it is going on after the BJP come to the power, the uh, education system, it has come down to a certain extent. And the money to be given to the institution is not properly reached. And uh, again, privatization of the institutions is coming up. If uh, the alternative government, not the present central government, comes, whether there will be change in the policy, higher education policy. And again, in the Northeast, there are many youths, educated youths. There are students who want to study the uh, good institutions. And in that respect, I'm asking, is not Manipur suitable to have an IIT? An IIT at best. And uh, say, IIT, we want in Manipur, we want for the science uh, education, Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research. In the Northeast, it was given to Nagaland. Nagaland has not taken it. Why not? It gave to Manipur. Manipur has young, talented science graduates, and uh, many students are going abroad for PhD. They want to come back to the country. They want to shock the people of India, the people of Manipur. So, Northeast, uh, in Manipur, even if it is small, we can have very good institutes uh, in different levels, maybe in terms of IITs, maybe in terms of Indian institution, uh, Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research. We have a good uh, material and pharmaceutical industries and others could come up. What should be the policy of your party if it comes to power? Well, certainly, certainly the there would be a change between what is happening today. There will be a dramatic change uh, with what is happening today. Uh, I do not believe in wholesale privatization of the education system. I believe that there is a role for private organizations, but the state of the art, the foundation of the system has to be public sector, government institutions. The IIT, which is the best institution, is a government institution. So we would certainly spend significantly more money on education. We would not allow the capture of the education system by an ideology. So we would not be allowing you know, what is going on with the Manipur University and the RSS uh, vice chancellors. Every, every University in the country now has an RSS man in charge. That is something that we will, we will clean out, we will fix. We would like the universities to have an independent voice. We would like the universities to be the expression of the students, the professors, and the expression of the institution. We don't want to impose on top of that institution a, a, a viewpoint. Broadly, you would see a dramatic increase in the amount of money that is being spent in higher education and in primary education when we come to power. On the matter of Manipur having the best institutions in the country, I'm ab ab absolutely certain that Manipur has the capacity and the talent to have the best institutions. I will look into this matter, I will study this matter, and we will try and see if we can work something out where, where you get quality institutions in Manipur. Thank you. The next question is from Jankochon Kongsai from DM College of Arts. Supravat Saman Sri Rahul Gandhi. It's a blend of privilege and pleasure for the students of Manipur to be in live interaction with you. You have been through several integration programs 
in different places and today in Manipur. Hence, I appreciate your endeavor. Thank you. Mr. Rahul Gandhi, I have two questions to you. The first question is, what are your promises to the people of Manipur if you become a prime minister? And yet the other question is, Politically, what's your perspective on Prime Minister Narendra Modi? Thank you. My promise to the people of Manipur is that I will engage with the people of Manipur and listen carefully to what the people of Manipur feel and what they want. I will, I will have an ongoing dialogue, conversation with the people of Manipur. And I will make sure that wherever the national government can help the people of Manipur, the youngsters of Manipur. The national government is extremely responsive. Manipur has special needs. Manipur has special requirements. I mentioned the idea of special status. We will reinstate the special status of Manipur and the northeastern states. I think India has a job crisis. And we, frankly, are not accepting that there is a job crisis in the country. The Prime Minister is not accepting it. I think we have to accept that there is a job crisis and then the whole country has to become one in trying to ensure that we resolve this crisis. And Manipur has a role to play in that, in that movement of creating jobs for this country. On Mr. Narendra Modi, my personal perspective, he's very good at publicity. He's probably the best at publicity in the country. Um, he's very good at marketing himself. Excellent. Uh, I think maybe Baba Ramdev. <laughs> Baba Ramdev comes close. But between the two of them, they have number one and number two position in marketing in the country. Uh, however, the Prime Minister doesn't have the capacity to go into details. He doesn't like listening. He likes talking. He doesn't respect people's opinions. He doesn't want to be put himself in the place of other people. There's a, there's a certain amount of lack of humility. I think a prime minister, the primary thing of a prime minister is the ability to be humble and to listen to people. Because if you listen to people, India, Manipur, they will guide you. They will tell you what needs to be done. If you don't listen to people and you think that you have all the answers, you can never succeed as a prime minister. So I think what, what Mr. Narendra Modi really lacks is the ability to listen. The other thing is, he's angry. He's, an Indian leader cannot be angry. An Indian leader has to be loving, he has to be gentle, he has to be accommodating, he has to embrace everybody. So he has a personal sense of anger in him that doesn't allow him to listen and doesn't allow him to see the direction in which India should go. But once again, publicity, number one. <laughs> the next question is from Robin Hood, Bachelor of Education. He's, he's Robin Hood. Yes. <laughs> Morning, sir. Morning, sir. By sidelining all from politics, my question is: What is the mantra behind your fitness? <laughs> mantra behind my fitness. Yes. I, on most days, on most days, regardless how busy I am, I try to take out one hour to do physical exercise. I'll do running, or I do aikido, which is sort of like judo. Uh, I swim. I used to play football. I don't get much time to play football now. I don't, I don't have access to sort of a football, football game. But I keep, I keep busy. Yeah. But I've, over the last couple of weeks, uh, I've sort of been breaking my own rules. So I'm having a bit of, I'm not getting much time. But I try to do at least one hour of physical exercise. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a big round of applause for his fitness, for being so young, for staying so young for us. The, 
The next question is from Bocato K, final year MBBS. And this would be our last question. Uh, so uh, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, coming in Manipur, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, I speak on behalf of the uh, students of RIMS, Regional Institute of Medical Sciences. I wanted to request you and know you, where you stand on upgrading RIMS to uh, M status. All in there, sir. I'll, I'll have to. I don't know the details of this matter. Oh. I will look into this matter and I can uh, give you an opinion once I've looked into it. Okay. I'll, I'll try and be favorable. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. So very warm welcome to Manipur, sir. Thank the, you. The land of Jewel. The land of? The, the Jewel of India. Sir. Jewel of India. Uh, sir, I'm very sir. Hey, relax. <laughs> relax. Where are you? Atif Nawaz from NIT Manipur. Sir, I have come here to represent my college's voice. Ko represent karne. Sir, uh, uh, like, 12 lakh people have given an exam. Tha, sir, uh, top... 11 lakh 80,000 ko hada ke pahunche the yahan pe sir sir yahan aake laga nahi ki ye matlab itna deserving sir you have been to stanford you have been uh, you have studied from cambridge sir aap aake nayi nits ko dekho sir ek baar ki kya inse aap kya expect kar rahe ho ki aapko lagta hai india kabhi us level tak pahunch payega jis level pe engineering colleges sare 3 lakh par annum ki package lagti hai yahan pe sir so aise kaise hum log progress karenge sir we are the youth of this country sir Sir, I want to say that, sir, ki, uh, sir uh, jase aapne abhi bola tha, ki, like uh, this government is not um, making new colleges, new, new NITs, new IITs. Or, abhi sir ne aage bhi pucha tha ki, when are you going to provide IIT to Manipur? Uh, new colleges ki jo halat hai, sir. So, mujhko nahi lagta ki IIT bhi yaha pe aap kholenge to, abhi hamara college NIT jo hai, wo primary school hai, wo secondary school hoga. But hmm. as a difference hmm. hoga, or kuch hmm. uh, sir, aap aaye, aap please dekhe, I invite you to our okay. college. Uh, uh, where is it exactly? Sir, NIT Manipur, it is in uh, Langol. Sir, uh, sir achha, aap aayenge, nain, nain, I'll uh, come. Main aajata, I'll come and see it. Uh, sir, so, very, I'll come and see it. Uh, sir, very, uh, thank you, sir. sir very, we'll organize. It will be difficult for me to do during the election, but I will uh, I commit to you that. At some point, I will come and see your... Sir, you will come too. For me, there is a big problem that I don't have an auditorium. We will do any program. Let's go out. Let's go out. We will do it in a workshop. We will do it in a workshop. We will do it in a field. We will do it in a field. We will do it in a field. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We won't be able to accommodate so many questions due to shortage of time. So thank you so much. We apologize for the inconvenience. And last but not the least, we have some interesting questions for you, sir. Somewhat informal and that have been requested by the students and the youngsters in this room. And I would be asking on their behalf. It's a rapid fire round. Rapid fire round. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you just have to choose to answer. Okay. It is just five questions. And are you ready? Yeah. Shall, okay. Uh, are you a Barcelona fan or a Real Madrid fan? I'm a Juventus fan. <laughs> but between Barcelona and, Barcelona and Real Madrid, I'm a Real Madrid fan. Wow. Next question is... Actually, let me, let me rephrase that. Until Ronaldo was there, I was a Real Madrid fan. What is the last book that you read? I am that. I am that. Note that down. I've and read that book many times. That, that's it's very wonderful. nice book. We, we all need to read that book. And the next question is, are you a dog lover or a cat lover? Dog lover. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's a guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure ice cream. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the last of this rapid fire round, are you a Pani Puri lover or a Alu Tikki lover? Alu Tikki. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That's, that's, uh, that's the quick five questions that we have prepared for him and that's all we have for the interaction round and all the questions that we could accommodate. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Gandhi. You. And um, Can I just say two words? Yes. Yeah. So, thank you very much for coming here. All the professors, 
uh, all the students. It's been an honor for me. It's been a pleasure for me um, coming here and listening to you. As I said, there is a ideological fight going on in the country. There is a fight between those who want to defend all the cultures, all the languages, all the different ideas in this country, and those that want to impose one idea on this country. We do not believe that any idea, any idea is big enough to be imposed on our people. Ideas should come from within, ideas should come from inside people, ideas should not be imposed on them. So when you're thinking about what is going on in India and when you see the violence that is taking place, when you see that your culture is under attack, when you see the citizen amendment bill, you have to realize that you are systematically being attacked. We are all systematically being attacked. When a person who criticizes the government is charged with treason, put in jail, he's not being attacked alone. Every single one of you, me, everybody's being attacked. And the only way you can fight this is by standing together, standing united, and saying that we're not going to accept it. And that is what many, 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 many people in this country are doing today. We are working together to defeat this brutish, unpleasant, nasty ideology of the RSS and Mr. Narendra Modi. And we are going to win in 2019. As far as, as, far as youngsters are concer concerned, I would have a couple of things I'd like to advise you. Number one most important thing is humility, is love and affection for people who you're working with, people who are around you. Hatred will not get you anything in life. Hatred will not give you anything that you're looking for. Love and affection and humility will give you whatever you choose, whatever you want. So my advice to you as youngsters, I know that it is a difficult period. I understand that you have fears. You feel that maybe you might not be able to get a job. You might struggle to uh, get a job after your education. That is the situation in India. We understand that. And we are all working together to fix that problem. But the anger that arises inside you, the fear that arises inside you, you must not convert that into hatred. You must convert that into love and affection and into working together with everybody to take this country forward. I'd like to thank all of you once again. And I commit to you, all the youngsters of Manipur, all the people of Manipur, that I am here to be with you. I'm here to work with you. You are more than welcome to ask me questions. You're more than welcome to even come and complain to me. My doors will always be open for you. And in whatever way I can help you, whether it is education, whether it is healthcare, whether it is your IIT, in whatever way I can help you, and what little I can do, I will always be, with, be there for you. Thank you very much for coming here. All the best. Jai Hind.